Today we're going to be talking about the SCAR. We have both the SCAR L in 308 and the SCAR 16S in 556, since they're essentially the same thing. And up front, we have a special guest. That's going to be the new Huxworks Flow 762 Ti. If you haven't heard about it, that's because it was just announced today. Let's shoot it. Yo, honestly, I, I think I need at least sword instead. I'm kind of embarrassed about the walkers on video. You think people notice? Yeah. Yeah, they're going to notice. You think so? You look poor. Thanks. Thanks. Did you hear a miss? I didn't hear a miss. Look at that bitch right there. Red hot, you can see the geometry of the silencer. That's what you don't want to do with titanium cans, but we're out here testing it, so you don't have to. Here we have the FN SCAR, both the 17 and the 16, originally designed in 2004 for the US SOCOM SCAR contract, which was the Special Operations Forces Combat Assault Rifle Program, of course, SCAR sounds a lot cooler than soft car, so they chose that acronym. I don't know if anyone would have bought it if it was called the FN soft car. Yeah. You know? I don't like anything soft. It sounds kind of weak. So that's a piece of information <laughs> I didn't know going into this. Doing our research, I found out that that's what SCAR stood for. I'm sure could be some new information to some of you guys as well, but what was that program? So the idea behind the program was to have a lightweight modular assault rifle and to be able to switch to different calibers. So a quick swap barrel was one of the primary needs. They ended up selecting the SCAR 17 for the US military contract and not the 16 in 5.56. Soldiers who used the 16 found that it didn't do anything better than your standard uh, M4 platform rifle. The tests are online. They put all these, this, the XM8, an M4, and the HKA 416 all through the same test, 6,000 rounds of rifle and they measured stoppages. And surprisingly enough, the SCARS uh, came in second place on stoppages, least amount of stoppages, to the XM8. So the SCAR in any format is a short stroke piston operated system. These things from tip to butt are gonna be pretty similar. You have, they either come with a compensator flash shutter or muzzle brake, depending on what SCAR you get. If you are looking to suppress it, they have your standard half by 28 or 5 eighths by 24 threads under those muzzle devices. Rolling back a little bit further, all of these SCARs, except for I believe the 15P, do have cold hammer forged chrome line barrels, which we like. That is awesome. A adjustable piston that has two settings. Your 10 o'clock setting is gonna be suppressed and your 12 o'clock setting is going to be adverse. A lot of times when you're running these, if you're on the suppressed setting and you don't have a can on it, it's not gonna cycle. Yeah, and while we're on that topic, Zach, how does FN feel about people suppressing their SCAR rifles? You know, I planned on talking about this later, but since you brought it up, we might as well talk about it. We're gonna have some B-roll showing this. If you put a can on your SCAR, even if it is these Huxworks low flow cans, you're going to void your warranty. And for several reasons, the SCAR 17 being the big specific one, I've noticed it on both of these, just doing a little bit of maintenance. We'll include B-roll again. It overgasses your system, not so much with these cans, but traditional suppressors. And it actually starts to shear out your bolts back here. You have five bolts retaining your rear receiver plate, two on each side, and then one up here in your pick rail. It actually begins to pull them out and we'll have, I can see right now where these screws are actually shearing out and maybe on camera, if you get the right angle, you can see these guys right here, how they're starting to allow that receiver plate to travel backwards. Yeah, it's significantly worse on the 762 yeah. 51 model than it is on this 5.56. For guns that are notoriously good at killing optics, adding a suppressor to it just makes it kill itself. So that's interesting. <laughs> the SCAR in any format has a metal upper and handguard, a featuring a polymer receiver, polymer stock. It is a folding stock that allows you to fire the gun 
with the stock folded, which is great if you like backpack guns or anything that you have to deploy quickly and you may not have time to actually get that stock out, slap it home, you can fire it from the closed stock. The trigger on these guys, man, I wish I had better things to say. They, a trigger's a trigger. It's a smooth break, crisp reset. Not the lightest trigger, not a competition trigger, but it works. I believe the 20S actually comes with a scar, a Geisley Super Scar. Phenomenal triggers, they feel amazing. Anything that Geisley does, you know it's gonna be right. These ones we have to have three positions for select fire, so those always kind of suck. FN also produced the EGLM, which was a scar specific grenade launcher. I believe it was the enhanced grenade launcher module, EGLM. They look fucking sweet. Unfortunately, we don't have one. If you find one for sale, or if you just find one, call me, all right? <laughs> Let me know. Because it's made popular by Bad Company. It's made popular by Bad Company too. Yes, sir. Great game. Great. One of the best. Which leads us into our next segment. Why do people know these guns? Some of you might know the SCAR rifles from movies and video games, such as... Oh man, Battlefield 2. Following that, just further cemented into video games with Rainbow Six Vegas, the Bad Company 2, the Bad Company 2. The Bad Company 2. Fucking best game ever made. Any Call of Duty following that. Ready or not, Escape from Tarkov is probably one of the more popular ones right now. Man, the biggest game to ever exist, probably Fortnite. All these Gen Zers, they have a nerf SCAR now because of Fortnite, so you can hit a little action, you know? <laughs> and then the big screen. Yeah, also known in many films, such as uh, Inception, Fast and Furious, I believe it was in the sixth film, and Transformers films, it's been all over. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the manual of arms a little bit here. We've got controls that are very similar to standard AR-15 controls. We've got an oversized mag release on both sides of the firearm. We've got a pretty standard uh, bolt catch right there. And we also have, an oversized charging handle that is angled down away from this top pick rail. So this is a reciprocating charging handle. Both of these models have reciprocating charging handles. You may have heard that the newer FN scars have non-reciprocating charging handles. Uh, this is because people were bussing up their thumbs when these are charging, and uh, I assume it could be an issue depending on where your hand placement is when it is reciprocating during firing. You can always tell when someone hasn't fired a scar when the first thing they do is they get that high C clamp in mm -hmm. the rear, and then they're just eating charging handle. Yeah, you can see, if you see clamp too close, uh, you can see where this charging handle travels in this slot here. So if you see clamp here, anywhere near your magwell, you're just gonna get busted up. This portion, or really the whole video, is only possible because of our friends at Capital Armory. They are the nation's largest NFA dealer, and they are your one-stop shop for all of your quiet needs. Capital Armory handles all of your paperwork and makes getting into the NFA game easier than it's ever been before. No transfer fees, no middlemen, expert level customer service, and silencers shipped directly to your door once your paperwork clears. Visit CapitalArmory.com or stop in on the Cedar Park, Texas location and get started. Thank you, Capital Armory. Let's get back to the video. Another thing to mention, the brass deflector is actually a separate piece. It is not forged into this aluminum upper receiver, so that can be replaced. Do you know of anyone that's worn out their brass deflector? I have never heard of wearing out a brass deflector. Yeah, just yeah. on Reddit, I shot my scar 500 rounds and I needed to replace everything. Yeah, yeah, the first piece on any rifle that always fails is a brass deflector, as we all know. I'm convinced no one on Reddit owns or has shot a gun. So, trying to measure usability of these platforms and just have a little bit of fun, we're gonna see who can have the fastest build drill. We have Dylan has the timer. Ready? If you don't know what a build drill is, Six rounds at like seven yards, roughly. I'm ready. ready. That was six rounds. I think that was as fast as this was willing to run right there. But, all A zone, it passes. You can see I just let this thing kind of take me for a ride, but that was as fast as I could literally run this thing. That's slow as shit, what was our time? 157. Here, because he hasn't been introduced properly on camera yet, Dylan, he's next up on the build drill. Let's see how he does. All right, see how it runs. Shooter, are you ready? Ready. Aiming at the base of the target, six rounds. Nice group, nice group. Let's Not check bad. it out. He's just on it. His time. However, Oof. Ooh. a sluggish Ooh. 199. 
Your gun, sir. Your sword. My sword. Your mag. There should be six rounds in there. If there's not, that's your fault. You ran the drill without it, so. <laughs> you agreed when you got here. Yep. So, Sebastian here, you've been seeing his work throughout all of these videos. He's been behind the camera, in front of the camera. We haven't let him say hello just yet, so. Howdy. The man himself. Let's see how he does. My hat's Probably shoots the most drills out of everybody here, so. And is gonna do the worst. Shooter, are you ready? Ready. Stand by. Hello. Jing handle fucking broke again, dude. Look at that. Well, like actually broke. That's not just a. Yeah. A pin that fell out. That is a hard failure. That is the not the first time a charging handle is broken on this gun. So. Another reason these aren't seeing the most service use is because of shit like that. And especially when it, the, the SCAR 17 is notorious for destroying optics and destroying itself. Uh, this is not a factory charging handle. I think we've replaced this literally three times already. And this will be the fourth time. We did lose the charging handle for the SCAR 17, but I found this 5.56 round and I'm thinking it looks like it'll fit. So we're gonna find out if your SCAR goes down in battle or in your mom's basement. Can you get it back in action using a round? Can you get it up? Oh, come on. Uh, did almost. that chamber one? I don't think it did. I, I doubt it. Around. I might need another round. Yeah. Stand by. Maybe if I come from the right side, my mount was getting in the way. Oh, there, there it go. is. There you go. There it is. Boom. It now has been upgraded to a non-reciprocating charging handle. Let's see how you guys got ears on. Yeah, All here right. we go. All right, let's throw our gas over to unsuppressed. SCAR H field mod. 556 five, round charging handle. I think it's in action. Let's see. Yes, sir. All right, so after you take the gun apart to get the charging handle out of it, Use a round on the ground, get her back in the fight. So the cans that we're rolling today, they are the Huxworks Flow Cans. Yes, Flow Cans, the new 762 Ti, just announced today. It's a scaled up version of what you have there in your hand and a titanium version. The Flow 556K is a 17-4 stainless. Again, this guy is titanium, and they're both made using Huxworks's patented flow-through designs. And you might be asking yourself, why is flow-through important? What is different on a flow-through can than your traditional silencer? Yeah. So essentially a, a flow through can allows the gases to actually pass through the end of the suppressor when you're firing, thus reducing the back pressure, also causes less wear on the internals of the firearm. So you're not getting all that hot toxic gas back in your face. It's going to be one of the first things you notice if you shoot a higher back pressure can, especially on if you just grab a random rifle semi-automatic rifle and you start sending it, you're going to get gas. The other nice thing about these, they're light. And it not overgassing your system means it's not gonna increase your cyclic rate, which is wonderful on the SCAR because it just keeps running like a fucking sewing machine. Yep. They're awesome. Killer choice, especially for the gas sensitive rifles. The 762 Ti should be available on our friend's Capital Armory's website today. If you're interested in it, if that's why you're here, now you know. And you've been hearing it all day. So that's gonna wrap things up for the day. Yep. Uh, God, we probably shot close to a thousand rounds today alone already had thousands of rounds on both of these rifles prior to that if you guys liked the video please subscribe leave a comment thumbs up let us know what you think if we fucked up and said something wrong or wasn't accurate let us know so we can do better our last video the stg44 our first video actually is up there as well so if this is the first time you've seen us check that one out as well thank you for watching thank you for being here Say thank you to Sebastian behind the camera. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Thank you. When people talk about machine guns, you'll oftentimes hear people say that they're uncontrollable or unreliable. Machine handle fucking broke again, dude. <laughs> You're going down on me in between the sea, sir. No? Before no, your time. Not That's what you get bills. for going to the range with a bunch of fucking zoomers, all right? <laughs> they don't know dog shit cock rock music.